on the east coast of New Zealand's South Island lives a 1930s fishing hut, nestled on the shores of Camp Bay on a stretch of rocky volcanic coastline. Swimming in these icy waters felt so amazing. There's no hot water on this part of the farm, so it's a cold shower either way. We had a bit of a drive yesterday to get from Mount Cook to where we are now. We're gonna be spending the rest of the week here on the Banks Peninsula, and we have probably the cutest tiny home I've ever stayed in. All of the details and everything they've put into it is so well thought out. All along the coast here, there's heaps of mussels. So last night, Joel and Laz had what we called a mussel off. Bree, Brooke and I were the judges and it was a pretty fun thing to do. We made a few rules to the mussel off. Whoever spent the least amount at the grocery store got the indoor kitchen. Laz got to cook out of the camp kitchen on this cloudy afternoon. And whoever won got to have the best sleeping bag on our upcoming adventure. <laughs> All right, so um, everyone has eaten and the verdicts are in. We're going to start with Brie. Tell us who, what dish you're talking about before you vote, please. <laughs> For Lawson's dish. Oh, that's Nate. Do I go over the same? Oh, yeah, Lawson's Brooke. Dish. Yeah. Yep. Lawson's dish. I'm going to go a... Seven. Ooh. Was that because you had too much salt for breakfast? <laughs> 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 That's a seven and a half. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, so <laughs> I gotta give it a nine as well. Oh, Joel gets the sleepy back. How's it feel? It feels good. great, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> 31 times cooking uh, mussels now. <laughs> Which I can thank. Thank my mum for teaching me. I just woke up from the longest nap. I think all of the work and travel from the last couple months has been catching up with me in the last few days because I've just been so tired. But we're getting our stuff together because these guys also own another hut. It's four and a half kilometers to hike there. So Laz and I are gonna make the walk and the boys found some dirt bikes. So they're gonna bike up and meet us there and we're gonna spend the night in the little hut. I think this will be our last big adventure for our time here in New Zealand. We only have a couple more days and today is the last day that's going to be sunny. So we wanted to make the most of that. After about an hour of walking, we've made it to the hut. I learned that it's actually an old schoolhouse from the 1800s, and it looks exactly like a gingerbread house. It's really cute. Wendy and Alex ended up coming along the hike with us, so it was nice to chat about what this land used to be before Wendy and Alex bought the property. They own all of this, their own private beach, and so many acres of land. Ha ha ha! 
Did you need a hand with that? Here you go, Alex, to take it. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, just it up Oh, yeah, over there. Yeah, like such. Oh, <laughs> oh my god, it's so cute. Who's doing the MTV print? Oh my god, the MTV print. This is epic. I thought how big it is. So yeah. one of our, even so it was a school, and I think it might, I, I imagine that it actually seems as a church as well. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, but oh, this um, is originally the seat. Our biggest dream is to actually do a mezzanine. Yeah. To put yeah. all the beds at the top, the yeah. fireplace there, yeah. all living space. Yeah. This part of the farm is known as Little Port Cooper. It was a small secluded village in the 1800s that housed the harbour signalmen and their families, who guided the ships into the harbour. The schoolhouse looked after the few children in the village and is the only building left from the settlement. Everybody's in bed, <laughs> including the little mice <laughs> in Alex's bed. Are you guys cozy? Very cozy. We're slightly worried about the mice, but other than that, pretty cozy. We had a bit of a sleepless night in the old historic schoolhouse. It felt like an experience anyway to spend a night out there. Bad weather swept in as soon as we began the hike back. The cold breeze was intense. <laughs> and by the time we reached our tiny hut, our fingers felt numb. I was so badly craving to just make a coffee and sit by the toasty fire. We made it back to the hut, but we don't have the key to get in. <laughs> So we need to wait for the boys to get here. Here come the boys with all our stuff and the house key. Yay! So we're going to make some damper cell fruit scones on the fire. So just going to get the fire going. We have had it on all day. Okay, so I'm just like, just thinking maybe we cut it into four little pieces and we fry them individually on Fire. Are you excited? Okay, I don't like saltados. Oh. <laughs> Is that a joke? No. <laughs> Sweet, more for us. No, I'll eat it. I'll eat it. No, I don't like saltados that much either. Um, but I. Oh, I just don't don't mind. Just finished our baking and, and Wendy's popped over with a homemade pie and who I don't know. You, what do you think looks better? <laughs> pie, damper, very thin. <laughs> Thanks, Kaya. 
The more I travel, the more often I find these places that just feel extraordinary. Each time I encounter such a destination, I'm reminded of the vastness and diversity of our world and how it really has the power to ignite a sense of childlike fascination within me. The more I explore, the more I realize that there's always something extraordinary waiting to be discovered, turning traveling into a continuous quest for moments that feel truly magical.